Hello, and welcome to our show for the love of animals. Have we got a buzz of a show for you? I'm Darlene Pickford. <laughs> and I'm Greg Bauer, and that was bad. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I want to tell our viewers about a couple of upcoming okay. shows. Um, we're doing this show today, and there'll be a part two coming up in the future on this. Good. We also uh, have you keep an eye out for a quilt show for uh, animal. animal lovers yes. and also one on gone fishing where we're going to look at the bowfin and the paddlefish. So we got a lot of fun things coming up for you viewers. So, But what's on tap for today, Darlene? Well, Greg, we're going to do buzz from the high. We're okay. going to learn. This is our first part about learning about bees. Okay. Which, how about you introduce uh, our beekeeper be most, today? <laughs> most be happy to. Uh, Annie Broyles down at the end of the uh, table here and she's a beekeeper and I guess she said she's been doing it since uh, the early to mid 90s and uh, she's a, a resident expert here yes, in the Paducah is. area with it and she's a beekeeper and Annie thank you so much for taking time <laughs> out to be with us today. We're thank so glad you you're here. Me. How did you get into the bee business? One Memorial Weekend, my husband sat around and wished for bees. Uh huh. Mm. And wished. And I was teaching school at the time, and I went back to school on Tuesday, and there was a swarm on my classroom door. <laughs> so we figured the good Lord wanted us to be beekeepers. <laughs> we had, I love that. We had been, when we moved to Paducah area, we had a bee tree. Mm -hmm. And then diseases moved in and killed off the wild bees. And our garden had got to where cucumbers and things like that looked like, well, they weren't pollinated properly. Uh -huh. And they were cull as far as being ready to eat and things. And so he wished and we got. And that was the beginning. And it's been several years. Okay. So. In nature, what is the purpose of the hive for bees? What's how does it fit in, in nature? It's to pollinate, to make new seeds for trees and plants and shrubs and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the bees are the only animal that produces more food than they can consume and therefore we have honey to eat. Are they the only? So far as I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I never thought of it that way. So they, in other words, they're producing more food than, than they, they themselves, can consume. than they, that they can mm -hmm. consume, okay. And we steal it from them. And we steal <laughs> it from them. And have been doing it for a long time, right? Since Bible time. <laughs> Actually, the bees are spoke of in the Bible 67 times. Okay. That's right. Yeah. I, I remember the uh, riddles about, yeah. yeah, I remember that, so, okay. Now, you brought this picture. Ex tell us what this is all about. I'm going to cry. <laughs> That's my husband's hive that we had the breeder queen in and he would sit in the chair and watch the bees fly and see what they were bringing in and, and how much pollen and that kind of thing. And we had our breeder queen in that and we would take the eggs from her and graft them and make new queens. Okay, so th this is the hive that you have. How many of these do you currently have? Well, I have about 250 of those boxes. Ooh. Not all of them have live bees in them, though. Uh, okay. Wow. Because so that's winter what... does do things to animals. <laughs> well, it, it's much like a number of the other animals. They yeah. hibernate in the winter. Yeah. Okay. And, well, they cluster. Bees cluster, cluster okay. instead of hibernating, actually. Okay. Oh, really? So they don't, so they cluster. Okay. Hmm. I, d I never thought about that. I've kind of thought of them as hibernating, but I guess... Well, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Well, kind of... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, why, why are bees important to us as human beings? Well, uh, probably every third bite that you eat, a bee has been responsible for it. So that's one of the main hmm. things that... Is that because of the cross-pollination? Cross-pollination and... Uh, the fact that animals and things like that eat things that the bees pollinate and it's just a, a way of life for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I, I certainly do like to eat so that makes them <laughs> very important to us. <laughs> okay, you were you started mentioning queen. That, I understand there are three types of, given honeybees that there are three types. I, explain those to us. Well, the queen of course is the mother 
Okay. And uh, she comes from a peanut-shaped cell on the in the uh, brood chamber, uh -huh. and she's only fed royal jelly. And uh, she emerges in 16 days after the egg is laid. Okay. And then she uh, goes in about a week uh, on her maiden flight to be bred and comes back to the hive then as a queen to, to take over a hive. And she lays approximately 1,500 eggs a day all of her life, and she may lay up to a million eggs in her lifetime. Mm. So, wow. So. And the, the product of those eggs is what? Well, the product of the egg is the worker bee, okay. which is um, females, mm -hmm. and they are fertilized eggs. So they have both a father and a mother and 32 chromosomes. And then the drone bee, and the worker bee, go back, they do everything in the hive, from clean the cells to feed the queen and keep her clean, uh, to forging, uh, to bring in nectar and pollen, and guarding the hive. And then we have the drone, which is um, the male bee, and he emerges in 23 days after, he's, after his egg is laid. And he does not have a father, so he just has 16 chromosomes. He's a drone to the, um, uh, not a drone, a clone to the queen, okay. of the queen, actually. Okay. Okay, now, and there's, usually in a hive, there's one, what, one queen? One queen. And? Oh, maybe, she may lay two or three dozen eggs that will become drones. Okay. And they, their main purpose in life is to breed a queen. Uh huh. So they go out to do that and come back, and they don't even feed themselves. The worker bees feed them. The worker bee then does everything else in the hive. And there, there must be a lot of worker bees. Sometimes <laughs> as many as sixty to eighty thousand in a hive. And one queen. And one queen. And she lays fifteen egg, fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred eggs a day. So she's a busy lady. A, <laughs> <laughs> and a bee may live only three weeks. Uh, the worker bees, because they their wings actually wear out traveling back oh, and really? forth from the flowers. Uh -huh. So. And wow. how long does the queen live? Possibly two to three years. Okay. Now some beekeepers will requeen every year. Okay. And that's in order to keep new blood in the hive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the drones live about how long? Till they breed a queen. Okay. And then it, partic the particular year that they are raised in, if they don't breed a queen, come fall, the workers kill them and get rid of them because they don't want to take them through the winter. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. And the drone is the one who actually collects the nectar? The drone mm. does nothing, nothing but breed the breed queen. Oh, just breed, breed okay. the queen. It's a, okay. He doesn't even feed himself. Oh, okay. And the, um, the worker bees are all female. Okay. And they do every, pro every step there is through the hive. Okay. And so from the time they first hatch out, they will clean the cells where they've hatched out so uh -huh. the queen can lay another egg. Um, then they are, um, I'm not sure exactly how the order goes, but they will take care of the queen, keep her clean and feed her. And then they will um, guard the gate to the, or the, you know, opening the entrance. entrance to the hive. And then they become foragers. And sometime in that, there's two or three days that they actually make wax. They have um, slits in their abdomen where the wax is secreted, and that makes the wax that goes, that the honey's put in. Okay. The cells, the it, wax cells. It's, it's a fascinating process. Right. It's, it, yeah, if, if our children would come up the way the bees <laughs> did, we wouldn't have any problems at all. <laughs> Oh. It's quite a, a just getting yeah. it's quite a little society. It is. It's Mo Mother Nature really has some mm -hmm. uh, interesting ideas. <laughs> well, 
We're just beginning to scratch yeah. the surface on this, but we want to take a short break now and listen to a happy tale uh, about Sugar Tree, a beautiful cat. And there's a little video with this that was produced by a local middle school student named Olivia. And she's the one responsible for the video and the whole part of it. And I think you'll enjoy watching it, so give a listen. Sugar Tree found us during one of the small ice storms in December 2008. He was the kitten stuck in the ice-covered tree in our yard and he was scared of the neighbor's dogs. We helped him down and he kept close to us. We did find out that he was the kitten of a stray that was being fed two houses down and he was free for the taking. We feel that he actually adopted us. He's a mixed breed with Maine Coon being the most obvious breed. He is intelligent, fun, and a great example to us about how to relax and take a nap. Sugar Tree enjoys an outdoor and indoor lifestyle. He now likes to demonstrate his great tree climbing ability, going both up and down trees. We couldn't ask for a better companion for our family. Welcome back. We know you enjoyed that little video. Just a, a really super job that was Isn't done by that student. Talented. Yes, exactly. And uh, we're visiting this afternoon with Annie Broyles, who is from Paducah, and she's a beekeeper. Yes, and, and I am learning an awful oh, lot. Abs <laughs> absolutely. So, um, how can our viewers get more information about bees uh, at that point, uh, Annie? Well. Most people have a computer, so Google honeybees. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you'll find things like for sale, facts, um, the honeybee and the beekeeper, and colony collapse disorder, uh, how honeybees and humans interact, and uh -huh. honeybees okay. for children, honeybees in Kentucky. And if that's not enough, why well, go to Kentucky Ag, uh, K Y A G. R dot com, KentuckyAgriculture.com. Okay. com. And how about on Facebook? On Facebook, um, we have a place, it's called the Bee Barn. Uh huh. And uh, go in and like it. And if mm -hmm. we wanted to ask you a question, how could we contact you? By my telephone number. Which is? 270-554-0068. Good. Okay. So that's many ways you can get more informa <laughs> information yes. about these, okay. <laughs> Okay, we were talking about the three types of bees and what they do, and I just can't believe that one queen, many thousands of workers, a few drones that don't last a long time, and the, the, uh, the, the hive, you said uh, the workers last about what, three weeks or? Three weeks, and when, when they cluster in the fall, those workers that cluster will, can live through the winter. Mm -hmm. It's because they cluster around the queen and keep her at about 93 degrees uh -huh. all winter, and they work in and out into the uh, honey that is stored. We leave about 80 pounds of honey on each hive each winter for them to eat, and uh, the bees just group and and stay around the queen and and. Keep her warm. Bring, keep her warm, mm -hmm. and they work in and out and bring food and stuff to her. So. Now you use the word some of the the workers forage. Explain that a little bit more. They f fly out of the hive every morning and go find a blossom. Okay. And uh, well, let's see what we can come up with. They go find uh, a blossom, and what do they? Well, they can collect nectar or they can collect pollen. Okay. And if you've ever seen a bee collect pollen. Okay. Um, there's one on a sunflower that has collected pollen on its back, in its uh, pockets on its back leg. And uh, they bring that back and feed that to the baby bees before they cap them to grow. 
and then they also um, bring back nectar and they have a a mouth part much like a straw okay. it's called a proboscis and they suck up the nectar and it goes to a uh, honey stomach and then they bring it back to the hive and regurgitate that and um, while it's in their stomach enzymes go into it and start the process of making honey then they regurgitate it to another bee and that worker also works it and then puts it into the cone and uh, makes the honey that is okay. will eventually come into this. All right. Now, what do you? And what is it that you're holding in your hand here? This I'll is hold a, it for the camera. A frame of honey. Okay. And be glad that I've got it in plastic because okay. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we'd all be stuck together. Uh -huh. But this is a frame of actual honey that came out of a hive. Um, and when we um, harvest the honey out of it, we cut the caps off, which is the tops, this top right here. Okay. Um, and then put it in a centrifugal force um, extractor, and it slings the honey out of it. And from that, we bottle it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What makes for good honey? Uh, good, a good honey flow of a lot of different kinds of um, nectar in the honey because um, some people like one one flavor of honey or one uh, one nectar type honey, uh -huh. and uh, I've always found that if if it's more than you know several flavors of honey, several flavors of nectar, and it, it makes a better flavored honey. Okay. And the bees don't uh, thrive as well with just one source of nectar as they do by having a variety of food. Like That's just like, just like us. Uh -huh. like just, just, just eating hamburgers all the time. Yeah. We, we need a balanced we diet. We need that, right. So they, they need the balanced diet. So, okay. Well then, if you had a farm with just rows and rows of the same uh, crop, how would that affect the bees? It would could lessen their immune system to where the diseases would move in on them. Because okay. it's, it's not as balanced, it's not, not as a balanced, balanced diet. The, okay. So they yeah. actually need a wide variety of They do better, and, and, and the honey tastes better with a wide variety of Okay, all right, nectars. I got, all right. Oh, okay, now, let's get back to the hive. What happens if a hive gets too small, you know? Um, they go out for forage and maybe they don't make it back and so they're... Well now remember the queens lay in 1500 a day so there's okay. going to be 1500 hatching out but sometimes that the numbers dwindle down. Right. Sometimes the queen dies mm -hmm. and okay. sometimes the whole hive dies just okay. because and if the queen's not there they will supersede her by making another queen but then there's that 18, 16, 18 days that they don't have a queen, that they haven't had their build up. And so that causes the hive to be smaller too. Okay. Okay. So it's a, what, what if the hive gets too large? Well, then they'll make a, one, a new queen and the old queen will fly off with some of the uh, workers and make a new hive. Hmm. So, they so that's how they multiply in nature. Uh -huh. that's a, and then they, hmm. This is a fascinating process, so they can, isn't it? it? They can make a new queen. Mm -hmm. Yes, hmm. and so can I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. No, we take a day old egg uh, uh. and put it in a particular cup and then we put uh, okay. those frames in a, a queenless hive and the bees will make all of those, bee, all of those eggs into queens. Okay. okay. And when they get them capped, which is putting wax all around them, okay, uh, we take them and put them in little containers. So because if if there's more than one queen cell in a hive, and one hatches out before the other, the one that hatches out first goes, "Ha! I'll sting this, 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 and this one," and kills all of the others. Mm, wow. So. <laughs> it's, Quite a little society. Just like humans, yeah. can't get along. <laughs> <laughs> Jealousy. Oh. Well, I, I'll tell you, just is just absolutely fascinating, uh, Annie, with 
uh, learning about bees like this. And we want to take just a short break now and listen to another happy tale. This is about two little kittens named Bandita and Vader. So give a listen, you'll enjoy this. Bandita is a female domestic short hair black and white cat that is approximately three months old. She loves to play with toys and with people. She's very social and loves to play fetch with her mice. She purrs every time someone puts their hands on her. She is very sweet and loving. Vader is a male, domestic, short-haired black cat and is approximately two months old. He's kind of shy with people, but he loves his sister Bandita. But he doesn't like dogs at all. He plays with Bandita all day and cuddles with her in their bed. He's a very sweet but shy little boy. Welcome back. <laughs> we hope that you've enjoyed that, that little uh, happy tale. And we're talking this afternoon with Annie Broyles, who is a Paducah beekeeper. And we are getting Bees oh, 101. Oh, yes, we <laughs> Believe are. Believe me today. <laughs> so, uh, we, and you've got some pictures there, I think. Let's uh, take a look at some of those pictures, Annie, and tell us what Annie, we have. What, what's happening with the bees in this picture? It looks like that a forger has brought in some nectar and is exchanging it to another bee so that it can be made into honey. Okay. Okay, now th the forager is the one that fl that would fly out of the this, nest. This is the forager. That's the worker. Well, they're all workers, but right. the one the one on the right is the forager and the or the one that has collected the nectar and she's exchanging it to another one that will take it and work it into honey. Okay. Now, how far will they go from the hive to forage for you said pollen and nectar? Probably up to two miles. Up to, all right. Okay. Now I just have a question. If I'm a forager, I mean, can I change my role and maybe stay in and maybe uh, produce, you know, take care of the honey? No. D no. You know, once you're a forager, you stay a forager. Oh, really? Because okay. you you have had your duty at working honey. Okay. So there's no there's no, no it's, upward it's mobility. The it's the older you get, the more you get to do. Okay. And All you right. finally get to go out. All right. What have we got in this one? Well, that is the large bee in the center is a queen. Okay. And that's her entourage that cleans her and takes care of her, okay. around her. Okay. How can you tell, I mean, other than you're telling me, how would I know it's a queen bee? Other her than Her abdomen is a lot larger well, that or more. Would enlarged than the worker bees. Would well, have to be delayed. And all those she eggs. always has a circle of bees around her usually. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, and, and when she goes out and uh, and collects these eggs, is that she's in flight, right? Yes. I, I yes. just that just they was mate mostly, in flight. They mate in flight. They're flying. And she will mate with anywhere from oh seven to twenty bees at one you know, not all at one time, but um, collecting this, this sperm from that many. Mm -hmm. And she keeps the sperm separate from her eggs until she's ready to lay an egg. Okay. And, and then she doesn't have to go out again and collect She more. never goes out again. She, she only goes out? <laughs> she flies twice. She flies to mate and, and if she swarms, she's, that's her second flight. Okay. Okay. Wow. Talk about a... <laughs> A, a busy lady. <laughs> okay, and well, that's what this she's is queen. another queen. The one with the red dot okay. is the queen bee in that one, and she's laying an egg. Okay. So, all righty. And that that is a queen cell. The thing that looks like a peanut is a queen cell on the side of. Uh, uh, frame of uh, brood, and this this other is uh, a developing uh, queen. Also, mm -hmm. okay, that's uh, in the larva stage. Alrighty. So, and I think we got another one. One more. One more. And that's a swarm. That's when the queen has taken when the hive has gotten too large and the queen moves out with uh, about half of the bees. Okay. And I, makes a new... So the, new the hive is splitting? Yes, yeah, hive mm -hmm. splits. Okay. That's a natural split. Okay. What's this about bees stinging only one time? When a bee stings you and only the... 
worker bees sting. Okay. And when, when she stings you, she loses her stinger. Okay. And if a bee lands on you and the back end or the abdomen is round, it's a drone. Okay. And he can't sting. Oh, okay. And the, uh, the worker bees, their abdomen is pointed and they can sting. And if you're out and you have on perfume or especially hairspray and you're where oh. bees fly and you get in their way, they will come to, come the, to you. that pheromone of, of perfume or hairspray. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And they do sting you. Mm -hmm. But bee stings are good for arthritis too. <laughs> Unless least, you're allergic. Or right. at least my arthritis. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, my, what are the enemies of bees? That's my last oh, question. Oh, my. I know you mentioned yellow jackets. <laughs> yellow jackets kill bees. Um, I've got a list of them here somewhere. Um, Because I noticed that they go, what, that's right, as they go out of the nest, anything, anything that flies. Anything that flies, birds especially, birds. mockingbirds and blue jays like them. Okay. Well, a lot of other birds too, as far as that goes. Yellow jackets, European hornets, dragonflies, bears, skunks, possums, coons. Oh, they have a lot of enemies, don't yes. they? Wow. And uh, a skunk, it, it's... The pheromones? No, no, it's not the pheromones from the skunk. What? But the skunk will... Um, kind of scratch on the hive I got you. and then it turns its tail around for the bees to come out and they get in, engrossed in its tail and then it, it'll go, the skunk will go away then and eat the bees out of its tail. That's how they, oh. you know. Mm. But um, yellow jackets and ants and things, there is a big black ant that will kill bees too. And dragonflies catch them on the fly too. We're just yeah. running out of time, aren't we? Oh. It's Penny. What wonderful information you yes. have given us. And we are going to be looking forward to part I, two. I can't look, can't <laughs> wait for part two. I'm going to have to digest over. Oh. Thank you for coming and sharing all this yes. information. Yeah. You certainly are a, a fountain of information about yeah. bees, and I certainly do see how unusual they are in nature, but how important they are to man. Mm -hmm. Our, I mean, our guest today has been Annie Broyles, who's a Paducah beekeeper, and uh, just we're just beginning to get a real education yes, on we bees. Are. I didn't know it was so so I complicated, did, I did, complex, I if you will. I didn't know it either. So, well, in closing, Darlene, I'm, I'm Greg. I'm Darlene. And we want to wish our viewers what we tell them every time: give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Bye.